eh, cuando era niño igual veía como imposible subir un volcán lo veía tan alto y tan como tan peligroso que en cierto modo te daba miedo pero el hecho de estar ahí de atreverte o sea, el volcán te hace eso eh, o sea, aquí en el sur de Chile creo yo a, a ir más allá a ir más allá ir salir de tu zona de confort y superar los límites los límites que generalmente te ponen en la cabeza ¿no? que al final están ahí no se van a mover Our first day on skis here in Chile. We're on Nokamai, the volcano. And we got a little bit of a late start today. And now we're going for a, a late afternoon summit. Kimai was super cool. It's a easy summit um, to the top and to ski inside the crater and uh, yeah, really cool resort and area. Like a lot of good playful terrain all the way around and good spring snow. So yeah, it was sweet. You know, cool. It's pretty mind blowing here. Nosotros los mapuches en torno a los volcanes, los volcanes son, son grandes generadores de energía con que resguardan un sector, que resguardan al final, mantienen un ecosistema en torno a, lo que, a todo lo que está en torno a lo que es un volcán. Se tiene que ver mucho con, con el ecosistema, con la protección, con el equilibrio en general. Eh, los antiguos dicen que los volcanes explotan cuando ven demasiado desequilibrio en las personas y en el medio ambiente. Entonces, eh, o sea, se viene un... es para generar cambios, para generar cambios positivos cuando el camino se ha perdido. Entonces, el volcán es eso, el que vuelve a entrar de nuevamente al camino, el camino a volver el ecosistema como está. <laughs> The Jaima expedition was kind of a mess. We tried to, we had a good weather day, like second day in the area, and uh, tried to punch it over there and just found a, uh, went a long ways on a road that was pretty gnarly, pretty rugged, like nothing like I'd seen going to a ski resort before. And Problemas. <laughs> finally we just reached a spot where the snow got too deep to pass. And uh, yeah, the only way around at that point was an extra couple hours and it would have been too late in the day to ski it. So. We uh, got up early the next day, took the long dip way around, but by the time we got up there, the storm was moving in, super cloudy, windy. Sunscreen for the sun, which is not there today, but it's also good for the cold and wind, which we might have a little more than expected.
uh, you have to think that those volcanoes are just like rising up to the sky and there, there is the Pacific Ocean in front and it blows just the, every storm straight to the, to the volcanoes. And Chaima at the end, we were, yeah, we went up, let's say halfway, and then we had to turn around because the wind was, was too strong and we couldn't see anything, so we decided to turn around, which made sense. In Pukan, we stayed for the celebration of the Chilean Independence Day. So we went to a fonda, which was like a... <laughs> ...festival that had a lot of traditional Chilean culture. They were doing some dancing and there were some drinks and waited out the weather for a couple of days and then were able to ski Volcan Villarica. Villarica means rich village in Spanish. It's a name put by the Spaniards when they uh, came here. But uh, the original name is Ruca Pillan. Ruca Pillan is a composed name in between Ruca, that means house, and Pillan was translated by the Spaniards as, as the devil, as the demon. So for most people was the house of the demon. But really that was a Catholic way of putting it because for the Indians was the house of the spirits. Maybe because the amount of activity or the power this mountain had, but the Indians that lived around the area, they would say their spirits would go into the mountain as soon as they die. So in Pucón, you have uh, Villa Rica that is just rising above the, the city. And the very next morning, we went to, to ski tour on it. And it was a really, and almost like an intimidating uh, experience for me, because usually I feel pretty comfortable on, on the mountains. But to see this like almost like living mountain, to see this smoke coming out was was an experience that, that is new for me and it was really incredible to stand on that crater and uh, you feel you feel the earth It's been pretty gray and, and snowy, rainy since, so got to uh, take the sea kayaks out. In 
Entre Lagos. Yeah, we did some kayaking and have been just waiting for a weather window to go up some of the volcanoes around here. I'm only eight years old and I just lost my friends. All the way back in Florida for these old mountains. I'm always the new Go blue. You can feel it. I am only ten years old and I just lost my dad. And now it's snowing again. Oh, place called Michigan. I'm always the new girl. Definitely the weather down here in Chile is moving in faster, so the, the windows are shorter. And it also has yeah, more potential to have that rime ice on the mountain. So it's, it's actually a, a quite rough place in terms of conditions. But yeah, with the whole scenery, it's just magical. Now it's super cool down here, like people are super friendly. They were always helping out and, you know, with, with the language barrier, I wasn't always getting it, but uh, actually at the end, the, the Chileans were super helpful and, yeah, always uh, on a good mood. <laughs> uh, the local people have all been super inviting, like just wanting to share and tell you about the place. And uh, yeah, there's definitely like a, a passion for the, the mountains and the volcanoes here that's super inspiring and yeah, makes you feel very lucky to, to be able to see it and then yeah, check out, experience the whole, uh, the whole culture because it's, it's different and it's very cool. I had pretty low expectations when we started out on Osorno because we were in a rain cloud to start. But then as we climbed, we got above the clouds and it was, it was an icy climb, but we made it up just in time for the sunset. And the sunset looking out was like something that I think will be in my memory for a while. Yeah, the landscape we get like, or what we've seen has been like just a bunch of, a bunch of different lakes and bodies of water. And then these like massive volcanoes that seem to come out of nowhere. And, when we're on the tops of the volcanoes, it's like you're looking out and you can see just a line of more volcanoes and then surrounded by a bunch of different lakes. It's, it's beautiful. Nosotros igual, pues nosotros trabajamos junto a la Fundación Chile Esquía y llevamos a los niñitos a esquiar. Pues. Nosotros acá en la comunidad tenemos 15 niños de la comunidad que ya están esquiando. Eh, y tienen, o sea, tratamos de dar la oportunidad que nosotros no tuvimos a esos niños. A esos niños de que, que al final los niños son agentes de cambio. Son ellos los llamados a resguardar este territorio. Si nosotros no fomentamos eso, Al final todo lo que nuestros ancestros lucharon se va a perder. Entonces nuestro legado quizá es hacer eso. Hace más que la nieve es una amenaza como una oportunidad. Entonces, y que al final se generen, generen comunidades de montaña y que protejan todos estos territorios. Mientras más la gente conoce territorio en invierno, y, y si son jóvenes y, y con una buena perspectiva hacia el futuro, Con, 
con una mente más de regeneración y, 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 y cuidar el planeta, eh, genera eso, pues, genera un cambio positivo. Entonces, sí, ahora veía hartos jóvenes mapuches esquiando y creo que van a ser más. Creo que va subiendo este, este visito apasionado por la nieve.